Texas LSU against Louisville, two highly ranked teams who have been top seeded in their region. Louisville started this out last Saturday by beating Kansas State in overtime. They did it with this shot from Tony Branch, his only bucket of the ball game, the final 71-69. And then Friday night, Daryl Griffith putting on a show, Dr. Duncan Stein against Texas A&M, leading the way with 24 points for the Cardinals with their superior quickness, posted their 30th victory of the year. Texas A&M just could not contain Griffith, could not contain the Cardinals throughout the ball game. The final 66-55 in overtime. LSU last Saturday started their act by beating Alcorn State by a score of 98-88. It was the Macklin and Sims show. Rudy Macklin tossed in 33 points, and as for Willie Sims, he added 31. So on a day when Dwayne Scales was not up to par, LSU turned back Alcorn 98-88. And then Friday night for LSU, the opponent was Missouri. And inside, Dwayne Scales got 17. Ethan Martin took care of the driving. Scales, LSU, and the Bengal Tigers, a winner over Missouri, 68-63. Today, the opponent is Louisville. Live from the Summit, the Midwest Regional Final. The Summit in Houston, Texas, the scene for the regional finals of the Midwest. Three unranked teams in the coaches' poll. UPI, Iowa, Purdue, and UCLA have advanced. Today, the two teams ranked second. Louisville in one poll, and LSU in the other will battle, and whoever wins will be the top-ranked team going to Indianapolis next Saturday for the semifinals. And they will meet the winner, Iowa, over Georgetown. That magnificent comeback by Lute Olson's Hawkeyes today to qualify for the final four. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Henberg, along with Coach Al McGuire, Billy Packer, a crowd of over 15,000 here at the Summit in Houston, Texas. We're going to see some great individual players today. Al McGuire for Louisville, one of your favorites. Daryl Griffin, everybody's All-American. He has a 48-inch vertical jump. He likes to play in traffic. He can shoot from anywhere. He plays and runs. He's a Louisville living legend. And Billy Packer, they say that the forward tandem for LSU may be the best in the country. Basketball players, and the key thing today, though, and Rudy Macklin right here is a guy from Louisville also. Fundamentally so super sound with great physical talent. So we're going to see some players out here today that rank with the best in all the country. Metro Conference champion Louisville have won 30 games, the winningest team in the tournament, 30 and 3. Dale Brown's LSU Tigers, the winningest season in LSU history. They are 26 and 5. So while the tempo and tenor of this NCAA tournament has been toward the underdog, it won't be that case in the Midwest. Whoever advances from this region will be, should be by ranking, the favorite to win the despite his forward position. And Wiley Brown as well. Macklin controls and a foul immediately on Daryl Griffith. The game is two seconds old, and Griffith tacked with a foul. Well, you can see the tremendous leaping ability. We saw a number of players, Arnett Holman yesterday, with that ability to get off the floor so powerfully and quick, and Macklin is another one of those guys that can do the same thing. Purdue will play UCLA in the semifinals next week in Indianapolis on Saturday, and it'll be Iowa against either LSU and Louisville, the winner here in Houston today. Ethan Martin, number 21, on the side. It goes to the freshman Carter. That's Dwayne Scales, a whistle away from the ball, and a foul is against Macklin for pushing underneath. He was must Excuse me, Al, Rudy Macklin picks up a lot of quick fouls. You can see that, that uh, Louisville is going to go into a man-to-man -man defense, and right away, LSU goes to that double stack inside to use the power. Jerry Eves, sophomore guard, brings it up court. Hawked by Martin. 2-3 zone. They're going to force Louisville to put it up outside. Look for Griffith to come across through the middle. It's very important which team gets the lead here. They'll be able to govern the tempo. The shot is made by Rodney McRae, a 20-footer for the freshman center. And it's a 2-0 Louisville lead. A lot of similarities between this press and what Johnny Wooden used to do at UCLA. Obviously, Johnny Crump is an assistant. Turnover, Brown ahead to McRae. He'll slow it up and wait for help. It's interesting that Iowa was one of the three teams to beat Louisville this year. Well, I was good. Check that. Was, I'm, I'm incorrect in that. Right. Illinois of the Big Ten beat Louisville. Ronnie Lester might be the best guard in the country for his size. That'd be something against Daryl Griffith. 
I think Darrell's going to find a home in the middle instead of out of those wings. He misses that to, shot. He's going to have to shoot against really big people on the wings. Dwayne scales to Martin. Martin to Howard Carter. High C Carter, a freshman, unable to connect. The long pass by Smith to Griffith. Here he comes. Louisville four, LSU nothing. Griff plays under control at all times. He never panics. He just glided. Now they're trying to force the ball up the right hand, right hand side of the court to get into their trap. Ethan Martin has been going left. Howard Carter double team dishes it off. Hook throws it right into the arms of the Louisville player Brown. Here come the Cardinals leading four to nothing. It's Darrell Griffith inside Wiley Brown. He scores six to nothing Louisville. Keeping pressure up court, they're trying to get into a transition game. Louisville rather play a slower pace, settle back into his own. Good move keep... by Howard Carter. And it's tipped in by Dwayne Scales, LSU's first bucket, 6-2 to two, Louisville. We play two minutes, 20 seconds. Wiley Brown, Darrell Griffin, great pass. lead. And a foul on Dwayne Scales. Plus the basket should be good, Dick. Boy, that was an absolutely great pass. You can see when Darrell gets all that defensive pressure on him, everybody, the minute he touches the ball, looks at him, and he has the ability to dish off. And the basket is good. Beautiful play. And there it was. The ball hit the backboard, was on its way down. Good call. You cannot touch a ball when it's in its downward flight. After it touches Apex or its zenith, after that, it is goaltender. Apex and zenith, Apex. you stayed up late last night. <laughs> the line, the brilliant sophomore, Derek Smith, unable to convert the three-point play. It remains 8-2 to two, Louisville. We're two and a half minutes into the first half. Ethan Martin brings it down. Clever little guard for LSU. Notice how often Greg Cook will step out to handle the ball, trying to get Macklin and Scales loose inside. There's there Cook. Are. Scales is open, and he hits it. No, he misses the bank, and Griffith rebounds for Louisville. 8-2, to two, Cardinals lead it. Griffith right through the arms of Wiley Brown. Brown turned his back thinking Griffith was going to shoot the 10-footer, and Griffith was intending to pass all the way. Well, Wiley Brown was doing this, guy was looking for rebound position. Griffith should have put the ball up. He was in that tight. That's the touch for LSU. Well, excuse me, Willie Sims, number 10, into the game for the first time for LSU. I think there's that 2-2-1 press, and what they're trying to do is trap Ethan Martin as he crosses half court, only when he brings it down the right-hand side. Martin, the expressionless uh, guard of Junior, and a turnover. It goes through the hands of Scales, and LSU off to a slow start. Three minutes, 11 seconds have been played, and the Tigers have but two points. Eight to two, Louisville. LSU will stay out of the zone until they get the lead. So it's very important for Louisville to control the lead. Notice setting back to the 2-3 zone now. I'm sorry. Derek Smith can hit. Rebound, Wiley Brown, very strong. Oh, what a power. Ten to two, the power goal by Wiley Brown. Strength. What a story. Absolute strength, Dick. And a whistle. Darrell Griffith has his second foul caught reaching in. So a couple of close calls, and they both go against Griffith. Here you see Smith shooting a jumper. He really didn't have good form on that jumper, but look at Wiley Brown. This young fella is a bull inside. Goes right back up, used the left hand well, and got it off. Darrell didn't want to come out of the ball game right now. He motioned to Denny Crum, but he's going to sit down. So Roger Berkman, number 34, an outstanding defensive player, but obviously does not have the offensive prowess of Griffith, comes in. It's 10-2. We'll mark that score with Griffith out. He's more of a scrambler, Dick. They call him a kamikaze kid. There, there he goes. goes. Instant defense. Beautiful Great pass. pass. Wiley Brown scores. And it's 12 to 2. So Berkman comes in and contributes immediately. Well, the show needs a timeout. Yeah, they're taking one now. They've got to get the ball to Rudy Macklin. So timeout. The Cardinals of Louisville. Their fans are on their feet with 16 minutes, seven seconds remaining in the first half. Louisville 12, LSU 2. Mr. And Ms. Dale Brown, head coach of the LSU Tigers, called a timeout, try to settle his troops. They trail Louisville early, 12 to two, and those statistics rather apparent in the game score. As LSU has made one out of four shots, and Louisville six of eight. I think Dale Brown made a great play that time by not waiting for the commercial timeout. 
A lot of times coaches wait for the commercial timeout and they end up losing the game. There's three times you can win and lose the game, in my opinion. The first three minutes of the game, the last three minutes of the game, and the first three minutes of the second half. Willie Sims brings it down, number 10, now off to Ethan Martin. Daryl Griffith, the star of Louisville, on the bench with two fouls. Dwayne Scales, not there. What a rebound by Derek Smith, and he is fouled by Willie Sims of LSU, number 10. Dick, LSU's problem so far is they can't get in their offense at all, and you can attribute that to the good full court and half court pressure by Louisville. They haven't been able to get the ball to Rudy Macklin. You can see how frustrated he's getting. Here we see the rebounding effort by Derek Smith. Excellent timing, reaching in by Willie Sims. Back to the live action, Rodney McRae brings it down for Louisville, helping out. Man-to-man -man defense, first time in the ball game. They had no choice, they had to go into it. They're down by 10 points. 12 to two, Louisville. McRae comes out high, over Scales, not there. Rebound, LSU. Long pass, Martin to Scales, too long, out of bounds. Dick, when you're down this far early in the ball game, a possession is too important when you're not in your offense to take a chance at a long pass like that. And even though it looked like Scales was open, the possession was more valuable. LSU played like this in the first half against Missouri and was in trouble, but settled down the second half and eliminated the Tigers from Columbia, Missouri. Roger Berkman. Willie Sims, good defense. McRae to Eves. Eves. Derek Smith inside Rodney McRae loses it. Back out it comes. Smith was the right man in the right spot for Louisville. I think, it, I think it should post up Martin. Roger Berkman. A good patience by Louisville. Derek Smith, only a sophomore, was a wise guy to throw that ball back outside. There's quite a difference. Poking away. Greg Cook slipped in behind and made the steal for LSU. Cook's unbelievable on steals. He has over 31 steals this year. He's truly a forward, not a center. Ethan Martin dumps it off. Cook scales. Their problem is Rudy Macklin hadn't touched the ball offensively the entire game so far. Six minutes gone. Ethan Martin. There it is. Rudy Macklin follows it home, and it's 12 to 4. Welcome to the game, Rudy. But that was on a missed shot. Foul in the backcourt goes against Ethan Martin, number 21 of the LSU Tigers. Foul's Tigers, fourth Martin team foul. Fourth team foul on LSU. You know, Al, you're talking about posting up Ethan Martin. He's a good athlete. He's got Eves on him. He's going to come out now. Maybe that's exactly what Dale Brown was thinking about. Now he puts Carter and Sims in there, two superior athletes to Eves and Berkman. Louisville with two team fouls, both against their star, Daryl Griffith. He's on the sidelines. 12 to 2, Cardinals lead it. Eves brings it down, working with Berkman in the backcourt for the Cardinals. They set up a 2 3 high offense with their forwards in tight, popping to the foul line extended. Wiley Brown, he's going to pump. Two sophomores and a center on the front line for Louisville. Sims hurries it down court. Good play, and a foul on Rodney McRae, number 22 of Louisville. I think we talked about superior athletes. That doesn't necessarily mean they're better basketball players, but when you talk about athletes, you can see what I mean right there in the way Sims was able to use his strength, his great jumping ability, and take the ball right inside against bigger people. Sims is from Long Island City, New York High School. There's the LSU junior class with a freshman, Carter, and Louisville, the younger team. Sims. Uh, in Dale Brown's vocabulary, he refers to his substitutes as reinforcements. He said, here's my number one reinforcement, Willie Sims. Looking for his second point to cut the lead to 12-6. He's got it. I'll show you how valuable he had third in a player yet. That was in Denton, Texas against Alcorn. LSU returning Louisville the favor of the full court pressure. Jerry Eves brings it in. Derek Smith, Wiley Brown, two Georgians in that front line, both forwards and sophomores for Louisville. Berkman from Indianapolis, he wants to go home. Berkman recovers. Dale Inside. Brown on the three second. Wiley Brown, he has eight points for Louisville. 14 to six Cardinals. Dale Brown going crazy, felt he had a three second call on that particular exchange. Willie Sims comes right back. Sims has four. 
He's the Eastern God that LSU wanted to run the show and penetrate. Boy, Wally Brown so active going after the ball. His first foul by foul fouls on LSU. Greg Cook, first personal, fifth team foul. LSU, not only in the change to man to man, has become more active defensively, they become more active offensively. Sometimes that's a way to shake up his own team, make him go out and play somebody. Louisville leading by six, 14 to eight. We've played six and a half minutes. But if they get the lead, Billy, they'll go right back into their zone. There's Berkman trying to post mark. Gary Eves with a nice move, and he is fouled. I believe Rudy Macklin got a piece of him, and that would be second on Macklin. Yes, Macklin now has his second foul. So the two headliners in this game, Rudy Macklin, the All-SEC four for LSU, and Daryl Griffin, the All-American guard for Louisville, with two early fouls. They're both very close friends. They were out yesterday together, both from Louisville. They played against each other since grade school. Macklin has never beaten a team that Griffin played on. Score remains 16 to eight. Ethan Martin, Sims, into Rudy Macklin. Sims turned it over. Roger Berkman's defense forced it. Boy, Berkman is such a valuable asset for this Louisville team, especially in the style played by Danny Crum. He didn't score a lot of points. Well, he is living up to his label as instant defense. High post, a lot of movement inside. Wiley, Brown, and Macklin. That's where they need to get the ball into Wiley one time, get that third foul. Berkman. Foul is Berkman. on Berkman. Up. It's obvious foul. He cleared out with his right arm. Give him an elbow cutting across the middle. Dale he's Brown, 44. He's got a patch on his forehead. I said, how did that happen? He said, I was in the shower in the hotel, and I leaned over the shower. And you know those little hooks on the doors for the shoe shine rag? He yeah. said, I tried to put that right through my melon. <laughs> That's what you call a turnover. <laughs> There's Eves reaching in, Dick, trying to go on Martin. Pretty tough guy to take the ball away because he's got strength and he's built low to the floor. Now the team fouls are even five aside. You see when Brown turns around, the patch on his forehead. You think Ooh. these coaches aren't preoccupied this time of the year? 16 to 8, Louisville leads it. Early going, we played uh, nearly eight minutes. Inside to Dwayne Scales, and it's 16 to 10. Scales has four. That was interesting because Rudy Macklin thought the lob was for him. He ended up shielding. Got to be careful. Scales pushes off on those alley-oop passes. I don't know why they don't post up. Martin right now. Away from the ball, holding on Willie Sims of LSU. Well, Al, you'd think with Macklin with two on him and a guy as active as Wiley Brown, they could hit him inside and Macklin would really be in trouble. Second personal. Sims with his second foul, and that puts Louisville in the bonus. Jerry Eves toes the strike. He is a 67% free throw shooter. He has missed one today, has only tried. Denny Crum, what a career at Louisville since leaving UCLA as John Wooden's assistant. In nine years at Louisville, he has averaged 24 wins a year. Nine years, an average of 24 a year. Well, he's in the coaching profession. They call him Cool Hand Luke. He doesn't show any expression. He's uh, very thorough at his business. And I believe that this year's team is his best coach team. Don't forget, he lost his start and center to Scooter McRae. They took a freshman, his brother, and put him in there. That's a great steal there by Ethan Martin come behind. Derek Smith had a chance had at an it. easy layup. 17 to 10 to score. Eves missing that second shot. Smith getting the rebound. McRae triggers it in. Darrell Griffith is back in the game now for Louisville. Griffith with the ball, 35. Forces the zone defense by LSU. Back to the 2-3 and the out of bounds. Smith inside to McRae. Can't hit it. Rebound, Macklin of LSU. Here come the Tigers trailing by seven. I, I don't like what Louisville did that time. They didn't put pressure up court. They're going to let now LSU set up underneath. They should end up with two points. See, they break their rhythm. They play them all over the court. Rudy Macklin. Oh, what a play. Wouldn't go in for Macklin, but
but he was fouled. You cannot allow LSU to come down and make it a half-court game. The reason that LSU got out of the gate fast is because they put pressure up court. Here we see the play. Rudy Macklin, what a catch inside. Now watch this. He uses that left hand, almost gets enough English on the ball to get it in, slaps his hands. This is a super young kid. Eric Smith committed the foul his first, and at the line, one of the great players in the country, just a junior from Shawnee High School in Louisville, Kentucky, Rudy Macklin, number four all-time scorer for LSU, number three all-time rebounder, and has another year's eligibility. Well, I'm pleased the country's getting a chance to see him, Dick, because the last time we had him on a national hookup, he got injured in the first minute of the game at the Paul Alumni Hall in Chicago. He was injured all of last year, played a couple of games, broke his foot, and sat out the rest of the season. That's why he's just a junior. You know, and down on the other bench, there you've got Scooter McRae, who's sitting out this year. So that's uh, two great players who both had their uh, years cut short. Macklin now with four points. 17 to 11 the score. I predict we're going to see one heck of a defensive or offensive play from Griffith with a guy like Sims assigned to guard him when they get back to man-to-man. 2-3 -to -man. zone again. Pancho right, 44. He's a zone breaker. Good corner shooter is in the game for Louisville. He's on the right wing. When they Griffith. Darryl Griffith. Not there, but Wiley Brown is. Brown has been the star for Louisville. Ten points of Louisville's 19 going to Wiley Brown. They're not putting that pressure up court that they put on earlier in the game. That's a mistake for Louisville. Pancho right now on Macklin. Ethan Martin slips inside to score. Smallest man on the court, Ethan Martin. They're giving uh, uh, LSU back their rhythm. That was Martin's first goal. This is Jerry Eves, short. Rebound, Eves gets it back. Off to Brown. And a foul underneath for pushing. Yeah, Cook. Greg Cook, 43 of LSU, Gildy. I think he's really put, pushing off with both hands. That's the first time Wiley Brown had a wide open shot, and he took a little bit too much time. I don't think he could figure out whether he wanted to put it off the board or straight in. Here comes number 20 for LSU, Jordy Holtberg. He's a senior one of my favorite cities in all of the world. New Orleans, Louisiana, De La Salle High School. As Crum talks with his star, playmaker Griffith, not only the leading scorer, leading in steals and assists, he's one of the top rebounders, and also the floor general as a senior with that young core of sophomores and freshmen. Well, he's been great for college basketball. He was the only high school ball player invited to try out for our Olympics in 1976. At the line, Poncho Wright, he has his first point of the game, and trying to give Louisville an eight-point lead with this one. 13 and timeout here at the beautiful summit in the city of Houston, Texas. The Midwest Midwest Regional Final. Will it be Louisville or LSU? Timeout 954. We return. Tigers 21 13 the score. Oh, beautiful shot by Dwayne Scales. He's 6 9, but can hit that 15 to 20 footer with anyone. I thought he should have drove into the basket that time, but he pulled up and filled it up. There's another one. Darryl Number three. Griffin. Three fouls on Daryl Griffith. One of those days where maybe the moon isn't in the right position because Griffith. Every time he gets near the ball, he's picking up a whistle. Three fouls for Griffith, and he may be through for the first half. I believe so, Dick. I think that's all she wrote to the start of the second half for the legend from Louisville. You know, Dick, on the other hand, Wally Brown has not touched that ball down inside, working against Macklin. Macklin had two early fouls also, and he's still in the ball game with two. We apologize for our audio difficulties. We're working on that and hope to rectify the situation. 
If you couldn't hear us, we couldn't hear us either. So Rodney McRae has the rebound for Louisville. Jerry Eves ahead to Poncho Wright. The score is 21 to 15. Louisville by six. There's Wiley Brown down and low on Macklin. Nobody even looking at him. Poncho Wright. Hesitation without Griffith in there. McRae way outside. That's not his shot. That was poor shot selection. Yep. Wayne Scales all alone for Scales to call him the astronaut. I tell you, a replay of that one would have showed that Ethan Martin, the smallest man on the court, created a great blockout. We get a chance. We'll replay that one for you. And any break in the action, LSU down by as much as 10, has pulled within four. And the fans from Baton Rouge are chanting, LSU. Got to be patient now, Louisville. The reason for the long breaks being available is Eves is trying to take Martin inside, so nobody's back on defense. On your right, can connect. Rebound, Macklin. LSU can pull within two. Ethan Martin. And of course, Al, when you don't score, you can't press because the other team's in transition. Jordy Holtberg, he's a fine shooter. He scored over 1,000 points in his career at LSU, and the Tigers have clawed back with him, too. Ethan Martin's the fellow that runs the show out there. He's the stick that stirs the drink. McRae. There's Wiley Brown. Knocked away by Macklin. Holtberg, two on two. He's open. We have a tie game at 21. Dale Brown just screaming, keep it going, keep it going. Denny Crumb's going to have to take a time to settle his club down. Wiley Brown is out of the game. Oh, Here we see that long pass into scales. He's going to flush that one. And the guy that made it all work was Ethan Martin blocking out down inside. Derek Smith back in for Louisville. Poncho right. Rodney McRae. Louisville's lead once at 10 points. Now a dead even game at 21. Offense. Offensive foul against Derek Smith. A flop foul pulled off by Greg Cook. Al, the game has gotten away from Louisville, not so much from the score standpoint, but they've gotten away from the things that really got them the lead, the full court pressure, confidence, and, and patience and offense. And right now, they've turned it into strictly a game that uh, LSU would love to play. Well, when Darrell Griffith leaves your team, Billy, and sitting on the bench there, this is a young club out here, and it's very difficult for them to adjust. Griffith on the bench. They were leading 10 to two when he went out with two fouls. And without him, it's a different Louisville team. We'll be picking our Gillette track two most valuable player again. $1,000 to his university. Holtberg, no basket. He traveled as he started his dribble. I really thought in that one drought that Louisville had, they took off their full court pressure and allowed uh, Louis, uh, LSU to set up. Well, what hurt them, too, is they haven't scored offensively during that particular stretch. Tony Branch in the game, the senior for Louisville, trying to settle down his heart. Seven minutes remaining in the first half. Iowa has defeated Georgetown. The winner of this game will meet the Hawkeyes as Good Olsen stayed victorious 81-80, overcoming a 14-point deficit in the second half to beat Georgetown today. Derek Smith not there. McRae keeps it alive. And out it comes the great cook of LSU. LSU's an outstanding ball club. Last year, they're knocked out of the NCAA by Michigan State, the eventual champ. Also, Sal, Dwayne Scales didn't play in the game. Greg Cook way off the mark. McRae one-on-one against Ethan Martin. Oh, Roger Wright came back, deflected it away from his teammate, Roger Berkman. Too many red shirts. That was Poncho Wright's fault there. That lane was taken by Berkman. He should have left him there, and he should have became a trailer coming in. Rudy Macklin helping out at backcourt for the Tigers. Ahead to Holtberg. Greg Cook. LSU leads for the first time 23-21 at the 6.05 mark. And they've come back in the man-to-man -man defense really sticking out there. Without Griffith, you're right, out. There's really not that offensive leader. Poncho Wright can't hit. Rebound to Cook. Ethan Martin brings it up for LSU. 
Then he has to get to his club and set one down. Holberg, boy, is he a shooter. Hey, Dirty he's... Holberg, he's hit four of them. One call back on a travel, and Dale Brown leads the Tiger cheering section. LSU has outscored Louisville 14 to 2 with five minutes and 40 seconds left in the half. The Tigers in defense. LSU has put the pressure on, and with Griffith out of the game, Louisville hasn't been able to find a designated shooter. 25 21 as Wiley Brown takes a bad shot. Derek Smith loses it out of bounds. In the last five minutes, LSU has outscored Louisville 14 to 2. You're finding a little bit of immaturity out there right now, Dick, and the fact that it, Louisville's let it get away from him. That's Holberg. What a hot hand by Jordy Holberg, the 6'3 senior. He's come off the bench to hit four straight. He's hey. a scorer machine. Dick started as a freshman. He started as a sophomore, and he started half the year as a junior. But when they went out and recruited these other ball players, it put him on the bench. LSU now with a six-point lead, and they've outscored Louisville 16 to two in this stretch. And they're playing tougher defense. They really are. The man-to-man -man has made it much more aggressive on both ends of the floor. Roger Berkman inside to Wiley Brown. Good move. Take it away. Oh, he got hammered. Dwayne Scales to Martin. Back to Scales. And the foul is on Louisville. Tony Branch. Oh, Denny Crumb's really upset and probably should be. Man got hammered at the other end of the floor. Well, I don't think over the charging foul. No, he was upset at the, the one on the other end of the floor. Yeah, yeah, Tony Branch stepped into him, obviously. Next Saturday, a big doubleheader for you. It'll be Purdue, UCLA, and one semifinal game. The winner of this game will meet Iowa. And, oh, how about the Big Ten? They've really flexed their muscles. They've shown that they are indeed the strong basketball conference this year. You know what I believe? I believe because the Big Ten does not have a postseason conference tournament, that's why they do so good in the NCAA. Last year, they won the NCAA. They won the NIT. There's no injuries because they don't play those three games. They do have injuries. They have time to heal the injury. Plus, there's no emotional strain. I've said for years the ACC might have won two or three more national championships, but they didn't have their postseason conference tournament. Both these teams had to fight their way through postseason tournaments, and they both won those tournaments, uh, LSU and the SEC, and the Metro winners, Louisville. Well, you got UCLA. The Pac-10 doesn't have a postseason conference tournament. So Scales has 10 points, and the run now is at 18 to 2. LSU has outscored Louisville with Daryl Griffith on the bench with three fouls. Griffith is going to come back in the ball game. Denny realizes there's no tomorrow, so you might as well bring him back in and take the chance. Push off by Brown, got yeah, away with it. Got away with it, and he scores. That ends the drought. 29-23 LSU. He also got away with a little walk coming back in. Ethan Martin, Willie Sims, Sims, Banks, no good. Rebound, Derek Smith. You gotta watch for Derek Smith to get out of the gate. Now he's due to have a better game. Berkman to Branch, Tony Branch, bullseye. Excellent follow through by Tony Branch on that shot. Really good concentration. That's what gets away from you when you're having a drought like this. Branch Here? is the man who beat Kansas State at the buzzer to keep Louisville alive. Holberg finally misses one. Tip no good by Howard Carter. LSU with a chance to run off six unanswered points. Here comes Derek Smith. is the shot saved by Brown to Berkman and a foul against Greg Cook of LSU. Good call. It's a nice what? call inside. The cookie man just caught him as it went by him. Well, what happened is Scales thought he could go ahead and just let the ball go out of bounds, but excellent hustle that time by Wally Brown to keep it alive. And you don't mind saving it if you save it back in under your own basket because everything good can happen to you. Cook has his third foul. Daryl Griffith is back in the game. For Louisville, he scored only two points in the game. With Darrell Griffith with three fouls with three and a half minutes left to go, 321, I think that Louisville should step into a zone and protect him inside the zone, Billy. Well, the three fouls that he's had, two of them have been, one started with two seconds to into this ball game, so they've really been little touch fouls. He's got to be careful. Berkman's first point 
And it took a long time going in as it bounced on the iron. Number 34 in for LSU, Tyrone Black, a 6'7 freshman from Baton Rouge. He replaces Greg Cook. So Cook probably out for the rest of the half with his third foul. And Louisville now has come back to score five straight points to get back in the game. Another thing, Dick, uh, that you have to be careful of if you're a guy like Darrell Griffith, he goes inside so much of guys trying to draw that cheap charge on him when he's got the ball. Berkman comes out. Jerry Eves replaces Berkman. So the starting unit back on the floor now for Louisville as they've cut uh, LSU's six-point lead down to two at 29-27. Notice Dale Brown's been able to save Rudy Macklin, who had two fouls on him. He hasn't been in during this stretch. They're back now to that pressure up court, 2-2-1. Two, two, Ethan Martin can't hit. Rodney McRae, long pass, too long. Holtberg saves for LSU. Ahead to Scales. He likes that shot. McRae, what a rebound. Boy, he did rip it off. Louisville with a chance to tie it. And a foul on Ethan Martin reaching in. Martin. His second foul. Boy, Scales shoots right now. Huh? You know, when Scales takes that outside shot, the first time I ever saw him play, I thought they were, you know, he's a little bit out of range, but really that's a layup for him. He does like the shot from 15 feet beyond. Well, I, what it seems to me is that he makes bad shots. Well, he has excellent form, too, for a guy 6'9", fundamentally very sound. Griffith, nearly a 23-point average, but looking for his third point. LSU leads. Griffith can tie it. Well, Griffith uh, goes in spurts, what we call runs in the playground language. He might be on a run right now. The game is tied as Louisville has come back. Has scored eight unanswered points, and now Griffith comes up. LSU led 29-21 in the midst of an 18-2 run, and now Louisville has scored eight straight points to tie the game at 29. It's a smart move by Denny Quinn to take Darrell out because he picked up a cheap one in two minutes. And here you have LSU who likes to sit on the ball. So maybe some time would go by and Denny Crump could come out at halftime in decent shape. No advantage for them to sit on the ball now. Away from the ball, a foul on Dwayne Scales for charging. Scales fighting through the defense. Picks up the foul. Many of today's student athletes are interested in more than personal glory on the field or court. Drug abuse, one of the biggest problems confronting the nation's youth, is a major concern to thousands of talented student athletes. The NCAA and the Fiesta Bowl are united to educate young people against the tragic effects of drug abuse. Get high on sports, not drugs. Preceding announcement furnished by the NCAA. You know, Al, you made a statement in no sense hanging on the ball right now. You know, there's a, a matter of Dale Brown's philosophy, though. He likes to pull people out and actually use that stall offensively to try to get that back door or high lob into scale. Berkman can't get it, but Derek Smith rebounds, and Howard Carter made the defensive play to bat it away to LSU. Derek Smith seems to have butter on his fingers today. That's about the fourth one that touched and slipped out of his hands. Game tied at 29, two and a half minutes remaining before the intermission. There's the spread. There's the spread offense, and actually, out on the ball court right now are just two starters. There are three subs in the game. Howard Carter, the Ethan point man. Martin. Ethan Martin and Carter. Everybody else is sub. Joe Costello plays rarely on the floor for LSU. Also, Tyrone Black. That's Black. He traveled with the ball. I personally believe the philosophy of LSU's play and the way they play, that they have very difficult times in delays. I know they've been successful with them this year. The way I coach my teams could delay, a lot of times I go to delay the first half just to show I was governing the rhythm of the game, even if I was behind. Black is out, and Willie Sims replaces him, coach, and that means LSU has a very short this five on the floor. It's an unbelievable lineup they have out there now. Of course, he's being able to rest his starters a great deal and make sure they don't get into foul trouble. Costello at 6'7 is the tallest man on the court for LSU. And he almost makes a steal. He does. Ooh, a hope for And a Delicious. foul on Pancho Wright of Louisville. Good hustle by Joe Costello, a freshman from Arlington, Texas for LSU. We're seeing a calculated gamble here by Dale Brown. See the special St. Patrick's Day edition on NBC Sports World today. Wild Bengal bouts from Notre Dame plus Irish hurling next on NBC Sports World as we complete a big triple header today. That uh, is the Peacock Jordan NBC. A real proud to be Irish. My father was from Roscommon. It's an inner county in Ireland. Well, you're Irish. 
to find a way. Your day's tomorrow, and you've been celebrating all weekend. <laughs> this is St. Euro's Day, I keep telling you. <laughs> this is the Finns' day, but there are not enough of us to be heard. Tied at 29. It's been a cold spell for LSU, just as Louisville had its frigid moments in this first half. We're back in his own. Howard Carter playing in the middle of a 2-1-2. Roger Berkman comes back to the center court to hear the instructions from Denny Crum. A minute, 10 seconds left in the half. The winner gets Iowa. Almost turned over. Jerry Eve saves it. Good pressure defense by LSU. We're in the final minute of this first half. Tied at 29. Well, they, they, neither team, Billy. I, I think uh, Louisville liked to play for a last uh, shot, so would uh, LSU. Yeah, Denny Crum now says, let's go for one shot. What I think they're both trying to do is get to the second half and say, we'll play you with our best people in the second half. Now, what's going to happen here? LSU's got to come out. It's a tie score, and Louisville with the ball, meaning it's up to LSU to force the pressure. I they're going to be warned here in a second or two. The ref has to give a warning. 15 seconds and then the warning. Here they're coming out. Now that, that complies. Final seconds of the first half. Louisville with the ball, a 29-29 tie with LSU. Berkman. Look for Pancho Wright to get the shot. 15 seconds. Wright moving into the right corner. That's where he likes to shoot. Eves. Berkman. Berkman will shoot it. Louisville at two seconds, the end of the first half. So the Cardinals. A remarkable comeback. Louisville once had a 10 point lead and then scored only two points while LSU got 18. And then Louisville comes back to score 10 in a row. 20 minutes away from Indianapolis. 31 29, Louisville, the game score here in the first half official statistics, gentlemen. Here we see the stats, shooting percentages uh, kind of went back and forth in that first half, Dick. LSU couldn't get off the ground early and then, then uh, Louisville went in that long drought. Game pretty even, not only the score, but the way things happened in the first half. Louisville's 19 to 13 rebounding is somewhat of a surprise. I think the big thing is the fact that our two superstars really haven't gotten on track yet in this game. That may be the key in the second half. Jerry Eves hits the first basket, and Louisville has a four-point lead. He has five in the game. Eves. Griffith has scored just four points, and Rudy Macklin three, the two stars of these respective teams. And Macklin only has taken one shot, which shows you how little he's been into the offense. Well, they're putting that token pressure up court again now, which will break their rhythm. I believe for Louisville to win, Griffith has to put on the highlight film. Well, look at who's Griffith started out guarding Ethan Martin. Howard Carter not there, and Daryl Griffith oh. rebounds. And did he get up? There's the start of the film. Remember, he's only 6'4", and probably not that tall. And boy, he plays like a man 6'8". Wiley Brown, way short with that left hand. Brown is the man leading Louisville in scoring. He uh, had a right thumb amputated when he was a child, playing with a left hand and an artificial right thumb. Some of you know that story, but a remarkable athlete. I see Carter. Howard Carter makes it 33-31 for Carter, his first basket of the game. Another one of those super freshmen around the country this year. And we'll be honoring those freshmen, our NBC All-Freshman team, next weekend from Indianapolis. We're going to bring them in to Naptown to be so honored. Back to the 2-3 zone. Knocked away by Greg Cook. He, like Griffith, playing with three fouls. You know, in the Metro Conference, they had an outstanding freshman this year by the name of Paul Thompson and Tulane that we didn't get a chance to see play, but he's another one of those honorable mention type guys now. Here comes LSU with a chance to tie Howard Carter, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by Louisville, partially deflected. How would you like to try to get a jumper off in the corner with Daryl Griffith coming over there? And you know he can leap to the top of the gym to get a piece of the ball. I like the Dana Kirk's remark, the Memphis State coach on Griffith. Howard Carter, he hits that one. 33-33. Kirk said of uh, Griffith, he's in a class by himself. He should dip his wings twice when he passes over the rest of the three. There's Griffith with the ball. Game even again. Tightly contested. Louisville from the Metro. LSU from the SEC. Griffith. Oh, what a jumper. He actually went up in the air and faded away for that jump shot. It goes up in Stratus. LSU sitting back there in a 2-3 zone that time. Back went off to Carter. Carter, a freshman against Griffith. Now 
side to Ethan Martin. There's a double stack over on one side, trying to get the ball inside the scales or to Macklin. As I just said, we're going to have that freshman team in Indianapolis next Saturday. And a goal for Greg Cook. And it's tied at 35. Two and a half minutes into the second half. Griffith, lob pass to Smith. He was fired in the first half and he misses. Rebound by Griffith. Hawk by Martin. And he steals it. Ethan Martin trying to beat Eves. He doesn't. Good play by Eves. And it remains even at 35. Excellent defense by Eves that time. Yeah, we found him. And Eves comes back wow. to hit a 20-footer. Yeah, what, what happened on that fast break is a couple of guys were loafing there. And Eves did do a good job. But there should have been people there to follow up the rebound, primarily Carter. Martin got away without a charge as Eves is really hawking the little six-foot guard for the Tigers. That was a big four-point turnaround right there. Traveling against Rudy Macklin, so Macklin finally gets a shot and is guilty of the violation. What Dale Brown is screaming right now is get the ball inside. Just about everything the second half for LSU has been on the perimeter. That certainly is not what he wants to see happen. Not when you have Macklin and Scales. That's for darn sure. Dave says the ball is brother Terry, a football player in Kentucky. They must have some nice arguments around the summer table. I'll bet they do. Griffin, good fake. It won't drop. Tipped in by Wiley Brown. And a foul against LSU's Greg Cook, his fourth. There is a very big play. Brown inside to tip in two and draw the fourth foul on Cook. Watch him go on the inside here. There goes the shot up by Griffin. Look at the bat. No block out by Cook. And here is Wiley Brown going up with the left hand. We're going to see him now if we can get a close-up on that hand deck that you were talking about. He has the glove on it. On the right hand, you see the plastic glove that holds on an artificial thumb. It's a, a mold taken from the left thumb. So he's a southpaw, and he's played a big, big game today. About two-thirds of the thumb is off. I'm going to tell you something interesting. He's going to have an operation on that thumb as soon as the season's over, and they're going to replace his toe and graft it onto his hand, and that's going to be a full thumb. How about that? There's Brown knocked away, but it goes to Eves. Gary Eves has been in the right place about five times in the second half for Louisville. The Cardinals lead 39-35. Four minutes gone. McRae hits. 41-35. Louisville picks up where it left off at the end of the first half. Look for, for LSU to go back for man to man. They gotta call a timeout. Yep, they're gonna call a time, but they're going back to man to man. That's where they picked up their aggressiveness in the first half. Dale Brown, LSU's head coach, has called time to try to slow down the attack of the Louisville Cardinals, who have opened a six-point lead with 15 minutes plus remaining. Louisville 41, LSU 35. 31, 35. Well, we have a moment, gentlemen, for all of us. Now, McGuire, Billy Packer, thanks to the. National College of Athletic Association, Walter Byers and Tom Jernstead for all their cooperation. And uh, also thanks, I know many of you have commented on the music we're using here in the tournament. This is it, written by Kenny Loggins and Mike McDonald. Uh, music that has been the theme of this 1980 tournament. And this is it for Louisville and LSU. The Cardinals lead by six. You can believe that LSU is going to work that ball inside. There it goes. Frank Cook, not there. Rebound to Wiley Brown. Darrell Griffith will bring it down for Louisville. There's the man-to-man -man defense. They had to go out and start putting some pressure on. For some reason, LSU has fallen asleep in the 2-3 zone. Eric Smith open way off the mark. He's had a cold game. He's pulling his arm back on his shot. He's trying to steer the ball. Oh, what a great move. Right around Darrell Griffith. Willie Sims makes it 41-37. Dale Brown's Tigers down by four. Five minutes gone, second half. Out of bounds to Louisville. Uh, two outstanding athletes. We're going to see Willie Sims right here, a guy that uh, comes off the bench. He's a great athlete, New York City type ball player. Went by, stayed up in the air after that little hesitation. Put it in there. Great play. He gave a good fake to the middle. You know, he's third generation Jewish. Darrell Griffith comes right back with a 15 footer. 43 37. Griffith with eight. Pretty pictures, gentlemen. The NBC camera crew and George Finkel, an Emmy Award winning producer working here in Houston with us. His work in the Super Bowl 13 and the Orange Bowl Miami a couple of years ago winning that coveted Emmy. And of course, Harry Coyle, our Emmy Award winning director. So quite a staff. 
Jerry he, Eves had good hands that time, yeah. kicked the ball out. Ethan Martin fell asleep on that break. You have to know people are behind you. Griffith wants the ball, and that's why he's hit three in a row. 45-37, Louisville opens an eight-point lead. The most important thing of this game right now is that Daryl Griffith has three fouls. If he picks up his fourth foul, Louisville's in trouble. Another important thing is LSU hadn't let Macklin touch it. There, there he is. is. Finally got it to Rudy Macklin, and Macklin scores. And for the LSU All-Conference forward, it's only his fifth point of the game. Well, he hadn't touched the ball, Dick. It's awful difficult to score if you can't feel it. Now they've made a switch. It's going to be Sims on Griffin. Wiley Brown. Look on him. And he's Macklin. trying to post up down inside on Ethan Martin. Side to Derek Smith. Smith gets. If Smith gets hot, LSU's in trouble. He's not had a good game thus far. He needed that basket. Eight-point lead, Louisville. 13 minutes, 44 seconds left. Howard Carter bangs one home. 47-41 as High C Carter has six for the Tigers. Harley Brown looked at him after that shot and said, you've got to be kidding hitting a shot like that. Right this face. Darrell Griffith working on Willie Sims. Hangs and scores! Oh, my! I told you he has to put on a highlight film in the second half here for Louisville to win. And he's doing it. Now, any other player in the country take that shot, you put him on the bench. Sims deflected Carter there. He banks in two more as back and forth we go. 49-43, Louisville leads. Eight for Carter. Inside to Wiley Brown. And the foul is on home. It goes against LSU. It's going to be on Howard, Howard Carter. Carter. Here we we'll see Darrell Griffith going up in the air now. Now watch Willie Sims. He's a great athlete. He actually had the perfect block situation here coming from behind. Darrell just held the ball, pumped again, and put it in. Great freeze frame with the Louisville Cardinal cheerleader expressing it all. Seven minutes into the second half, Louisville 49, LSU 43. And it'll be a free throw show of shooting opportunity as Wiley Brown comes over and apparently jams. 16 out of 17. So Brown, I wonder if there was a little action going on. They've done that two straight games. Oh, here, here Here's what should happen. In the rules, it should say that the coach is allowed to go over to the bench and pick who he wants you to mean shoot the foul. The opposing the, coach. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The opposing coach, or who he wants to shoot the foul. Not the best shooter. Brown is not a good free throw shooter. Branch is, but he misses. <laughs> Dale, Dale Brown, Brown that's a bunch of baloney. He knew he's a, all right. He'll come right back in. Well, he sliced that baloney pretty good because he missed the shot. Branch hits the second one. It's 50 to 43, Louisville. Louisville's biggest lead, 10 points early in the game. LSU led by as much as eight late in the first half. Then they turned cold, didn't score the last four and a half minutes of the first half. And the Cardinals, with a 10-point run, took a two-point lead at the intermission. And see Denny Crum turn right around, put Poncho in. Deflected by Wright, but it goes to Joe Costello into the game for LSU, number 25. I would get the ball to Carter on Griffin because Griffin has three fouls. Isolate that side, post up Griffin. Outside Ethan Martin, up the alley. Back to Rand Macklin can't score. And finally, out of bounds to LSU. Nobody could get control of it. Well, they weren't jumping, they were reaching in there. Rudy Macklin can't believe he couldn't get his hands on the ball. You've got two things that if you're LSU offensively. One's that Griffith foul trouble. The other is to get Rudy Macklin, a 23 point per game score. You've got to get the ball in his hands here to get him on track. Well, what a weekend next weekend. Saturday, the semifinals. Many regard the best day in all of sport. Then Sunday, we have the AIAW Women's Championship. And then, of course, the following Monday night, the NCAA Finals. Beautiful. Long pass Griffith to Derek Smith. Hello. Bingo, bango, bongo. The reason for that, Dick, is that everybody from LSU was going to the boards. And with Griffith's ability to go up and grab that rebound, obviously somebody was open at the end of the floor. So Derek Smith now with six points has scored uh, the last two that he's fired up to. Nine-point Louisville lead. LSU needs a hot hand. Ethan Martin, offensive foul on Martin of LSU. Third foul on Martin. Sims put one up from out of his range a little bit. Now we see everybody going in for rebound. Nobody down on the other end of the court. 
Obviously, the pass opened. Derek Smith broke and puts it away. Boy, Billy, that really represents the value, total value of Daryl Griffith. I mean, he had the rebound. He knew someone was free down there, just felt it. As he took the rebound down, he turned around. Poncho oh. right, and it's gonna go against LSU, Rudy Macklin. They must make a move to Scales. Scales has to get in this game. If you're gonna go downtown, you're gonna lose. You must lose oh, with your stars. Dale Brown. 44-year-old head man of the Tigers in his eighth year at LSU, twice named the Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year, motioning for his defense. Inside to Griffith, he scores again, and he is fouled. Oh, my, Griffith. Time out, LSU, and listen to the Cardinals chirp. Here we're going to see the play inside. Excellent pass. You get him the ball in there. Was going to put it up on one side of the basket and just curled to the inside. The acrobatic Daryl Griffith has given Louisville its biggest lead with 11.43 left in the game. It's the Cardinals 54, LSU 43. But let's reflect on our predictions in this tournament. As we started, all of our predictions are gone. Let's see, Al, you had DePaul and Billy, you picked Indiana. Georgetown was my dark horse pick. They're gone. The only time these two men that I worked with are great, uh, probably all time, all year long, was they both liked LSU in this region, but the Tigers are down by 11. What do you think about next week? I tell you, if we have to pick again next year, I'm going to go on the basis of who I don't think is going to make it, because I'm going to be a lot better off. Well, I think UCLA speed will be going against Purdue's power. And I think a UCLA does not have a center, which might show next week, because they're going against a true aircraft carrier, Joe Barry Carroll. Daryl Griffith has scored 11 points in the second half, and it's Louisville by 12. And Denny Crum keeps the pressure up. Now you've got Scales and Macklin in the game. Look for Scales, Billy, to have a run right now. He'll fill it up. Every time he touches the ball, he'll shoot it, in my opinion. Martin had him, but didn't feed him the ball. Now it's Scales over McGray. Oh, you called it again, coach. <laughs> well, you know, and there's a push off by Macklin, who's fourth. Macklin called for the foul underneath. Scales has a dozen points, but the serious question for Dale Brown is how about Rudy Macklin as he picks up number four? Dick, I've seen LSU play a number of times this year, and what happens to Rudy Macklin when they don't get him in the offense? He has a tendency to pick up the chief foul because he's doing a lot of standing around. Here comes Griffith working on Sims and reaching in is Willie Sims of LSU. Now the Tigers trailing by 10 and it's tough to get it away from Griffith. Second foul on Sims and that puts Louisville in the bonus. That's the 17 foul on LSU. And a lot of time left and a pretty good free throw shooting club when it put Griffith on the, on the line. Oh, there's a light year left, 11 minutes and 22 seconds. I would inside LSU zone, whatever Griffith was, I'd keep the ball around, trying to pick up the fourth foul. Griffith way off the mark on the one and one. Howard Carter rebounds for LSU, talented freshman. Ethan Martin, blocked by Poncho Wright. Batted ahead by Bergman. Here we go, here we go! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> he had his moment, Billy doesn't like that. <laughs> Griffith slams one in, and it's a 12-point lead for Louisville as Dr. Duncanstein performs. <laughs> oh, I like it when he flushes it looking at it. I don't like it when he puts it over his head. Martin in trouble again. Rebounded by Poncho Wright, and now it's all Louisville. Ahead by 12 with the ball. 10 minutes, 40 seconds left in the game. Underneath is Berkman. Louisville celebrates its biggest lead as Roger Berkman up Goal off the fast break. And you saw again, they were mesmerized with Griffith having the ball. Five seconds. Boy, is Louisville putting LSU in a vice. It was a nice vice that time. I don't think the fellow made a bad play. Held the ball, he still holds hands. Here, Here it comes, around the world dunk. Up, around, bend, look backwards, give a disco move to 
Little different. How about another angle? There you see it. The doctor of Dunk. Little different than the St. John's game. He was looking that one right down the hole, not he, over the back of the head. He was skywalking. It, it doesn't make any difference with him. He's up so high. <laughs> he was ready to go up into that second deck. He's a skyhook. <laughs> oh, good jump by Berkman. Berkman gets the tap. Louisville with a 59-45 lead. The winner of this one gets Iowa in the semifinals next Saturday. It'll be Iowa against either Louisville or LSU. And Purdue, UCLA, and a dunk by Poncho Wright. And suddenly, LSU locked to the floor. Technical dick on that. Technical Grab foul for grabbing a rim by Wright. But the basket is good for Poncho Wright to make it 61-45. And Dale Brown, although there's plenty of time left, 10 minutes plus, finds his team down by 16. Here we see the good pass inside. Denny Crum really letting Wright know about it. He said, throw it through there. Don't grab the rim. He thinks everyone can get as high as Griff. I guess so. <laughs> There's Wright. He's saying, OK. Jody Holberg, who really led LSU into the lead in the first half. Holberg back in the game. His shooting awakened LSU, and he hits the technical foul. You better bet your bottom dollar that that ball is going to go into scales and Macklin now. They've got to go to their well, for some, big man. for some reason, they've never swung the ball back over on the side so Macklin could operate in the low post. Willie Sims with the ball, Holtberg in, along with Howard Carter, Rudy Macklin, Dwayne Scales. Holtberg, fine shooter, dishes off to Scales. Boy, Griffith again with a rebound. And he clears it. Out of bounds to LSU. The LSU fans calling for a foul on Smith as he charged ahead. And Dale here's Dale Brown pointing down. to the evidence. Look at my man on the court. How do you think he got down there? I'll be honest with you. I th there was a bump. A bump? Well, there was a collision. <laughs> but a pretty darn good play by Derek Smith to be able to catch that ball and throw. He was not a dribbler. There's oh, now it's going to go against uh -oh. LSU. Uh -oh. Dale's going to perform now. Coach Brown is up and at him. Same call the other way, and it's called a charge against LSU. That's a bad run of luck for the head man of the Tigers. You know, and that pass, too, that Derek Smith made, if he had thrown it up in the air with some kind of arc to it, Poncho Wright would have been able to run under it. But he fired a baseball pass. No chance. 61-46, Louisville led by their great All-American, Daryl Griffith. Nine minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the game. Louisville really exploded out of the shoot to start of the second half against the zone. Traveling on Derek Smith. You're not going to knock out LSU this way. LSU is going to make some type of run back at them. They're too good of a team. Particularly when they've won so many away from home. Yep. Which is a real indication that the crowd or the, the margin of the game doesn't really bother them. Yeah, they're 14-3 and three on the road this year. That's remarkable considering that's action in the tough Southeastern Conference. They won at Lexington, Kentucky. Willie Sims connects on a 15-footer at 61-50, 8 for Sims. Make that 61-48. There it is. Charge. Charging foul against Griffith of Louisville, his fourth. And he's going to come out right now. He really, I'm surprised he wasn't under control there. Yeah. He just took this one, one dribble too far inside the foul line area, guaranteed to get in trouble. Right now, I noticed when they won in overtime against Kansas State, I had the game along with Dick, is that once he goes out of the game, the team seems to drop their eyes and lose a little bit of their daringness. They just missed the guy when he's sitting on the bench. Right here is the key to the game right now. Plus the amount of time left. Nine minutes and 18 seconds is a ton of time. LSU with a pumpkin trailing by 13 points. More than nine minutes remaining. Roger Berkman, 34. Fine defensive player. Sims over the top of him. And the foul is against whom? Apparently LSU. Going to be on scales. Going to be on scales. Pushing from back. What's happening is the ball handlers from LSU are going so much one-on-one -on -one that Scales and Macklin can never get in position offensively. That's a third foul on Scales. You know, one of the most coveted titles in athletic competition is NCAA champion. During 1979-80, more than 12,000 student athletes are competing for this prestigious title. This is the NCAA's 98th championship year, 43. Exciting championships are being contested in 19 sports on three different competitive levels. They both with, and Iowa have all lost more than seven. That won't be the case, whoever wins this game. Records are made to be broken, Al. I don't want you to get upset. 
Poncho right at the line. Makes it 62-48 Louisville. And Dick, talking about losses, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, wins. This is the first Metro Conference team ever to go undefeated in league play is Louisville. Shows you the balance and strength in that league. And the first Metro team to get to the regional finals. And the man who just shot those two free throws, his hometown, Indianapolis. He says, I want to go back to Naptown. Market Square Arena, the site next weekend for the semifinals. He lost out of bounds. Hulberg off his leg. There you, you have a, a situation here, Al, where the guys who are not the real stars are trying to occupy the ball and the game, and it's really playing into Louisville's hands. Well, how many times have we heard Al McGuire say, you got to get the ball to your star. You got to know who your stars are. Inside Eames, and he is fouled. Who got him? Scales was one of the men in the thick of things. You know, Denny Crum goes Scales, to this Scales, his fourth foul. Then he goes to that high post offense, rubs the man off. He doesn't do a lot of things different from the first year he was coaching there. They just execute and execute. Four on high, and high pivot offense is from UCLA. That's Coach John Wooden. And he said, if it's good enough for 10 championships, it's good enough for me. You know, when uh, Louisville, if they got here by winning two overtimes, Kansas State and Texas A&M, and in both those games in overtime, it just appeared Louisville had a little more energy. I wonder if LSU is tired by that full court pressure of Louisville. Well, it's breaking their rhythm. I think what the mistake that LSU is making, number one, they should play to get the ball over half court, then set up, get the ball inside, and get back in this ball game. Well, NBC Sports later celebrates St. Patrick's Day. The Bengal bounce from Notre Dame. Those youngsters have battled it out. They just throw everything with the ring post at each other. Talk about really uh, free for all on turf. Ivory Sherling, if you've never seen those championships, you're in for a treat. It has not been very enjoyable for Dale Brown of LSU. His team has shot only 28% in the second half and has fallen 16 down to Louisville. And the Cardinals are on the line. Jerry Eves. Biggest margin for Louisville. 8.38 left. Denny Crum doing a real good job, not going back and relaxing on defense, keeping that full court pressure on, which is taking away LSU's chance to get in their offense. Willie Sims maneuvering and hits it. Tough shot for Sims, the junior from New York. He has 10. I think he's making tough shots when Macklin still isn't touching the ball. 65-50, Louisville with the ball and a big 15-point lead. 8-11, 8-10, 8-09 left. Iowa will be the opponent of the victor. They seem to be pulling high now. It's spreading out. There's too much time left to go to your delay. But they got Griffin on the bench, Griffin on the bench, so that gives him an opportunity to save him a while. You know, Iowa came from 14 back to beat Georgetown in the second half, and LSU has the ball trailing by 15 with 7.45 remaining. Too soon for a delay. Willie Sims, he wants it. Can't hit it. Tipped in by Backlund. No, it doesn't go. And out of bounds to LSU. Uh, nothing has fallen for Rudy Macklin even when he gets it, but it's just about the only time he touches it when he gets an offensive rebound. Here comes Wiley Brown, 41, back into the Louisville lineup. And Poncho Wright goes out. Wiley goes in there, you look at his back, and he just looks like the enforcer. Yeah, That's yeah, the last of those rebounds. He's the hatchet man who can play. LSU connects as Holtberg. If he gets a hot hand, he could rally the Tigers. It's a 13-point Louisville lead. Subconsciously, players look up at that scoreboard and start trying to freeze the ball themselves. Coach sometimes doesn't even have to dictate it. Wiley Brown with the ball. He was an All-State in Georgia in both basketball and football. Berkman playing for Daryl Griffith on the bench with four fouls, and time has been called by Louisville. I think a very good timeout because Denny Crum could sense that those players subconsciously were freezing the ball. This indecision when the Griff is out of there. Seven minutes and seven seconds left. 36 Olympic triumphs remembered in a special tribute. And you'll also see next Sunday the AIAW Women's Basketball Championship from Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant. Here at seven minutes left, Louisville 65, LSU 52, and Louisville with the ball. You can see that they push the ball closer into the basket now, trying to get into the offense. They were setting up so far away from the basket right before that timeout. Remember that.
that Macklin with four fouls and Scales on the bench for LSU has four fouls. Open is Brown and he lost it out of bounds. In fairness Last to Wally Brown, there was that thump. See, he could not control the ball with his right hand and it got away from him. That's why a lot of times the end of the game with the odd delay and they'll substitute for him. He doesn't have that good of control on any pass and he, that he has to throw. And he's not a real good free throw shooter as well. Gary Eves with the ball, Holberg on him. Fans want a double dribble. Martin on Eves, Brown draws Macklin. They're still not looking at the basket right now, though. That's the big difference. It's turnover. Very good LSU. And I'm still saying they went into it too soon. And um, yeah, I don't think they're hurt. freezing it out. I, I think that the players are no longer looking at the basket. That's to not score. a freeze, Billy. It's a delay. I don't care whether freeze or delay. They're not going into their offense. LSU with a basket can pull within 11. Still Macklin, ready to touch it. And he loses it out of bounds. It goes off the foot of Brown. Came close to charging. Yeah, and when you get a player that's that gifted and he doesn't touch it often, obviously the minute he touches it, he tries to make a play that's not there. Ethan Martin trying to slow down, patiently wait. There's six minutes left, exactly six. Howard Carter not there, and a foul on Wiley Brown of Louisville pushing off. Denny's up, he's feeling the pressure. First foul on Wiley Brown as Tony Branch, the senior guard off the bench, apparently going to come in. Well, he's a ball handler. He'd be put in there just to eat up the clock a little bit. That's only the second team foul on Louisville this entire half. They played over 14 minutes. Holberg, he wanted it. He's got it. Keep pressure up court on him right now. 65-54 with five minutes and 40 seconds left. Well, remember, Dale Griffith is not out of the game. He's merely sitting out temporarily, so you can expect him back in here around a four-minute mark. Roger Berkman on the side, Holtberg the defender. Berkman dumps it off to Derek Smith, and he's, no, take that Rodney McRae who scores, 67-54. That's the difference between looking for the shot and what they were doing the last time down. Holtberg up. Boy, does he have a hot hand. Misses that one. Rebound McRae. Boy, does he strong. Just a freshman. He went up like Unsell that time. He has to build like Unsell, too. Unsell, the former All-American in Louisville. Near steal by Macklin. Five minutes left. Five minutes. 67-54. Louisville by 13. Whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Sims. Reaching behind. Willie Sims with a foul. Now we're seeing him really spread it out. No postman in the game at all, surrounding the court. That's the fifth personal foul on Willie Sims. He leaves the game with a total of 10 points. There's our lineup next week. We hope you'll make plans to be with us on NBC. The semifinals at 1 o'clock Eastern time. The surprise Bruins against surprise Purdue. Iowa, another surprise against either Louisville LSU. Then on Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern time, the top women, Old Dominion, is still alive, the defending women's champion, AIAW championships. And then on Monday night, the 1980 collegiate basketball champion will be crowned. 9 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock in the West. Dick, that uh, Saturday afternoon, to me, is the greatest day in sports. It really is an exciting, exciting day for the best teams come to Indianapolis, all feeling they're going to win the championship. Well, you walk into Market Square before the first game, and you've got the complete house thinking they're going to win it. And that cheering and the electricity that goes through the crowd is just uh, something I hope everyone in their life gets a chance to beat for. Sims, out of this game, hoping he'll have another one before this year is over. He's fouled out. He's worth 10 points. 56 remaining. Dale Brown's LSU Tigers leading by as much as eight points late in the first half are down by 13 in the second half to Louisville. Denny Crumbs Cardinals playing much of this game without Daryl Griffith, but Griffith made his presence known at the start of the second half when he scored 10 points in about eight minutes. What happened right there, Dick? Dale Brown had 60 seconds to get a player in there. He waited till he got down to 55 and then said, I'll take a timeout. All right, with that timeout and 4.56 remaining in the game, let Patrick stay. I understand that the trouble with that uh, Irish whiskey, though, it, it causes deafness. What'd you say? <laughs> what a <laughs> lie. Hey, how about the one yesterday with Banks bouncing the ball? And if we'd have had him again, you were going to go to that knock, knock. Who's, who's there? there? Banks. Banks who? Banks a lot for playing so good. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
There we go. Denny Crum, it's all seriousness on the two sidelines as Crum's Cardinals lead by 13, and they have Derek Smith at the line. He scored only six points today. Not a particularly great game for him. He's averaging 15 on the season and made all Metros a sophomore. And he misses again. Scales back on the game, 31, got that rebound. Ethan Martin, he's crowded by Berkman. That foul will go against Berkman. Yeah, he's a good defensive player, but that was a mental mistake in his part right there. He should have let up on Ethan Martin. One thing no, no. for Louisville, you don't want to stop the clock now. Well, I think in using up your fouls, uh, Billy, that does help use up the clock. They still got three to go before they get into one and one. Yeah, but he didn't need to have the clock stop. 4.51 to go, might as well let it keep going. LSU trailing by 13. Holtberg, boom! Boy, is he a fine shooter. The left-hander, the senior, has 15 points. He leads. LSU didn't start either half. Nice catch by McCray. Under a lot of trouble. Four minutes and 35 seconds left. LSU trailing by 11. Louisville with the ball. Workman walked by Martin. Eves and Holker. As opposed to time, Denny Crum may be thinking about putting Griffin back in based on score, not time, if it gets down under 10. Smith free to score, and he is fouled. So Derek Smith able to charge in for the hoop as he saw the daylight. Howard Carter with a foul. Carter, There's the open Carter offense. turned his head there, Billy. Yep, open offense. Nobody in the pivot area. See Eves clean out. Carter turned his head. There comes Smith in. Really should have probably let him lay it up right there. The three-point opportunity had no chance to block it. So Derek Smith at the line with a chance at a three-point play, and Louisville's lead back up to 13. Smith, Smith from Hogansville, Georgia. He finished high school and entered college at the age of 16. That's much like Mike Jaminski, who will graduate before he's 21 at Duke. He hasn't looked smooth at all in his shooting today. You know, there's an extra little motion in his arm. You know, he started school at four years of age. Ball won't drop for the Tigers as Scales unable to connect. Here comes Jerry Eves for Louisville. He's played a fine floor game today. Hasn't he? Solid game. Eves in the backcourt. Especially with Griffith out, more pressure fell on the shoulders of the sophomore Eves. Everybody looking to go back door on an overplay right here. There's no help defensively if your man beats you. Louisville ranks second in one pole, fourth in the other. LSU second in one pole and third in the other. And the winner will get unranked Iowa. And Wiley Brown showed some quickness coming out of that corner for a big man. McCray to Smith. He's open again. Can't hit it, but Eves gets the ball back for Louisville. Oh, he's really playing well. Yeah, he's not a role student. He was a teammate of Lamp and Raker, the two Virginia stars at Louisville's Ballard That's High School. All. That's all for, for Scales. Dwayne Scales has picked up his fifth foul using the elbow. So the odds are stacking up against Dale Brown's LSU Tigers. Their star forward, Dwayne Scales, leaves with just 12 points. Scales and Macklin just was a frustrating game for them. They really never got a chance to contribute offensively. Dick, I think that's the fall to their teammates a little bit because for the last uh, eight or ten minutes, they have not touched the ball. And when you've got a great player like that, you've got to let him handle it. Sports World to follow. Stay with us. Louisville 69, LSU 56. It'll be the Bengal Bats. Those are all the amateurs, the students there at Notre Dame who battle one another. And then Irish hurling championships. I can't quite figure out what you do to foul yeah, in that sport. <laughs> no wonder if you got an enemy, that'd be a good place to try to get him. Those two fellas have taken almost 800 shots, actually over 800 shots in a year. You know, if they bring you to the championship final game of your region and they've taken 800 shots, you got to let them shoot some today. You're talking about Macklin and Scales, yeah. and they just didn't get a chance to fire. Derek Smith looking for his 10th point. And 71-56, and Louisville about to wrap a big red and black ribbon about this one and go on to Indianapolis. Howard Carter inside. Basket is good, and the foul is against Wiley Brown, number 41, 10 points for Howard Carter. That was a continuity uh, play. He started to go for his shot, he got hit, then a split second after he put the shot up. You know, continuity, Al, that's something in the pros. College basketball is a foul or not a foul. It's 
supposed to be, anyway. Well, how would you know if it's a two-shot foul or one-shot foul? There he goes right there. He was fouled way, way out there. Actually, Roger Perkins had got it fouled him before he ever made the move. You're absolutely right, Billy. That should not have been, the basket should not have been allowed, but in this uh, case, it's a three-point play. We're double-teaming, yeah. No, I, I, well, you agree with what I say. It was a continuity foul. But the continuity was well, way up court. He took a took step. The dribble after he was fouled. Oh, leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> 71. 59, a 12-point lead for Louisville with three minutes exactly remaining. And here again, I think that Denny is going with the score as opposed to time because he's kept Daryl Griffith out of this entire situation here for what? How many minutes has he been out, Dick? Maybe six or seven. That's least. right. Joe Costello, he can give the foul. is only his first. Commits the foul, and that'll send Roger Brickman to the line. Al, let me ask you about that. Is that a, a big confidence builder for the kids to know they can do something without him in the ballgame? Do you think that's part of Denny's strategy here? No, I think really for all purposes, the game's over if they keep playing against the clock that they're, that they're playing now. And they start settling into his own down on their end defensively. Uh, Griffin is so good and such a, as I said earlier, the like Louisville living legend, that uh, when he's not in there in a tight situation, they drop their eyes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do you think that he's trying to make sure that they don't drop their eyes? You know, he goes out of the ball game and these kids feel that they've won it on their own. Well, I think this game is pretty, pretty well over there. Rodney McRae misses that one. It remains a 13-point Louisville lead with 250 left in the game. Holtberg. Boy, a tough that's shot, a, and he oh, made it. Oh, oh, oh. he Boy, really kept his shot. eye on the basket there, but that's throwing up a prayer. 72-61, 17 for Holtberg, and a foul on Carter, Howard Carter. Good call. We're going to get back to now to where they want to want intentional fouls. Then he come will say intentional fouls, trying to get him off to one and one. And the way the ref usually tells that is how much time is moved on the clock. And also whether the guy has, if he has possession of the ball, whether they really made some attempt to go take the ball away. Right. You know, this is really an amazing story for the Louisville Cardinals. Denny Crum told us when we saw the St. John's game in midseason on NBC that it really has been a most pleasant surprise for him. He's had better teams. And then when he lost Scooter McRae, the older brother of Rodney, he said, yeah, I've, I've got uh, the grip of the great star, but I've got a freshman in there, Rodney, uh, three sophomores. Uh, I knew he'd have a good team, but not a great club. It has become a great club. Oh, it's an outstanding club. Probably the best thing about them is they keep pressure up court. They make you play to their rhythm. Where they made the mistake in the first half, the uh, middle of the first half, is they took their pressure off up court. They allowed LSU to come down and set up, and then LSU was cleaning their clock for a while left. They Eric's were back the second half, the full court pressure, and now they're ahead, and it looks like it's all she wrote pretty soon. And Dick Tuckett, and you talked before that final with the Big Ten being so uh, dominating in postseason play. Ethan Martin can't hit. Rudy Macklin was fouled as Derek Smith got him. Dick, so far, the Big Ten and the NCAA going up against the best people that you can put against them. You can't legislate your way to the finals. They're 10 and 2. And you got to remember, they've got two clubs still alive in the NIT, and they're over there in the NIT, they're 8 and 1. So that would be 18 and 3 against the best com competition in the country. And of the three losses, one was the Purdue one Indiana against each other. So does that end an argument as it to sure who does. played the best ball this year in the What does it do for basketball? the postseason conference tournament, Billy? Brady Macklin scores for LSU to cut the lead to 11. I think that's a factor, but in my estimation, the reason that they have that record is they have superior athletes and better teams. It's that simple. Well, we, last we, year, too? Yeah, last year, too. They won I, the I just don't think a young college ball player, you can put three more games on them. You don't allow their injuries to, to heal. When I was watching Kentucky play this year, Kyle Macy was just worn out. I think Kentucky was basketball long. Let's get back to this game. Louisville and LSU. Dale Brown arguing that last basket should be good, and apparently they've taken it away from him. It has not been a day of many wins for Dale Brown. Dale's still saying, I want it put on the board. 74-61 is the score on the board. He says Macklin's goal should count. And the referee said it should count, but Dale still does. And what he's trying to do right now is get the referee's attention because they're... Now they put it up. 74-63. Right. Now they put it up. Uh, this is a this is where a coach can ask for a correctable error. You know, he can correct the error by the scorekeeper at the first dead ball situation. Obviously, if he's wrong, he's going to get a timeout. But he was right in this case, and you'll see the score go up on the board. It is an 11-point deficit now facing Browns Tigers. Rudy Macklin, the All-SEC forward, getting only his seventh point of the game with that last hoop. 
It was one for one in the first half. All right, the kid on the foul line was the one that won the overtime game against Kansas State. Tony Branch, if you didn't see it, with time running out, Branch inserted in the game for that purpose. He was guarded by two tight, uh, two Wildcats at Kansas State. Knife between them, leaping Lena, 15-footer that bounced three times off the iron and fell home. Then Louisville came down here and had to win in overtime again against Texas A&M on Friday night. Branch drops it down the bottom of the well. It's a 12-point lead for the Cardinals. Dick, a few years ago, actually, one of Denny's first years is when he went to that Final Four against Coach Wooden's club. 75. Right, had a man on the foul line to win the ball game who hadn't missed a free throw all year long. That was 1971-72 no, season. That, no, that was 75. 75. <laughs> that was 75. the year Wooden yep. retired and won his, his final game. Oh, that's right. That Excuse was his semifinal game. They could have sealed it with a foul shot. 76-63, Wiley Brown comes back in. Tony Branch has done his job. He'll sit down. That'll be a substitution that Denny Crum will make in these final minutes. He'll get Branch in whenever the uh, team has the ball and try to get Brown in when it's on defense. Irish Special follows on Sports World. Howard Carter blocked by McRae. Controlled by Ethan Martin. Holper. Not there. Costello battling for the ball for LSU. Knocked away. Eric Smith. Wiley Brown stolen for a moment. That was the same situation before. Derek Smith was all alone. McRae with an easy hoop. And it's 78-63 with less than two minutes remaining. Howard Carter. Oh, beautiful play by McRae. Carter again, and he is fouled by Derek Smith. No basket. We're going to have a tough time picking our most valuable player in the Gillette Track 2 Award. Our experts are in a huddle. Well, let's let's do it openly. I just think that Wiley Brown deserves it. Well, who do you think deserves it, Billy? I, I'll tell you what. And, uh, come on, come on. No, I, I'm going to go for Daryl Griffith, and I'll tell you why. When they broke the game open at the start of the second half, now statistically he hadn't had a big game, but when they broke it open, he's the guy that did it with sensational play, and I think that was the area where it gave all the momentum to uh, Louisville, and, and he He's the guy that created it. There's one other guy that at least has to be considered, Jerry Eves, scoring nine points with Griffith out, had to run the show for Louisville. So we've got three. Who's going to break the tie? Let's give it to the team. Well, we got a tiebreaker. Our producer, George Finkel, All right. and our most valuable player award, a $1,000 scholarship, Gillette Track 2 award to the University of Louisville in the name of... Daryl Griffith, although he played half the game, leads his team in scoring with 17, and he has been such an incredible performer, not only statistically, but as an emotional leader of this team, that it's a worthy honor to a man who's made all the All-America teams and has already been named on one, of, one award as the player of the year in college basketball. As I'm going down, my last hurrah is going to be Wiley Brown neutralized the whole baseline of LSU. He won't give up. He won't give up. <laughs> Roger Berkman connects 79-64. Yeah. Who was the most valuable player in the Georgetown-Iowa game? That word didn't pass on. It would be interesting to know when that Ronnie Lester certainly had a great game for the Hawkeyes. All right, Berkman's, they're just sealing that coffin down with excellent free throw shooting in the stretch here. This game's all over. Oh, yeah. Joe Costello inside, finally to Rudy Macklin. Too late, too little. 80-66, Macklin with nine points. Well, this uh, young team has really been well coached by Crum. They don't make many mistakes. They, they overcame a horrendous slump in the first half. They were outscored 18-2. A young team had every right to fold. They did not. Rallied, scored 10 in a row to lead by two at the half. In the second half, it's been all Louisville. Foul by Ethan Martin. We'll send Rodney McRae to the line. Want to thank the men behind the scenes who have been so instrumental in this. Very difficult coverage the last few weekends and trying to bring you fans at home. The highlights, the scores, coverage to give you a, a feeling of the scope of this national tournament with 48 teams involved. Calling the shots back in New York, our executive producer, Don Olmeyer, our coordinating producer on basketball, George Finkel. Today's telecast was produced by our Emmy Award-winning tandem, the producer, George Finkel, and director, Harry Coyle. Don McGuire is our feature producer, Peter Rolf, associate producer, associate director, Randy Wands. NBC Sports will take you to Indianapolis and Market Square Arena, semifinals next Saturday.
Saturday. It's going to be Louisville and Iowa and Purdue and UCLA. The final four. Final will be on Berkman of Louisville. Okay, you made your predictions earlier. LSU was your last pick. They're going to be out. All right, now you've got only four from which to pick. Al, of those four, who do you like? Right off the top here. I, I, I really can't make a move on this one. I've, I've guessed wrong so many times that, uh, that it's frightening. I do believe that Louisville's on an uptick. They got through two very close games at OT, and here today they blew out LSU, which is just an outstanding ball club. You're saying Louisville. The luck of the Irish, you're picking Louisville? Well, I think they're on an uptick, but I, I prefer not to pick anyone in the final four. <laughs> <laughs> and they also have won two close games going by the McGuire theorems. How about you, Billy? I say this, that Purdue will beat UCLA, and I think that Louisville will beat Iowa. All right. That and means Louisville I... and Purdue. All right. In that game, Al, who's going to win that one? I got them to the, I got them to the finals. Make him Thank do you. something. Billy, you're Irish today. I made you honorary Irishman today. But you know the thing that in the UCLA-Purdue game, I don't see how UCLA, and they've beaten Ohio State. They've had an incredible run to get there, but how in the world are they going to guard Joe Barry Carroll? Hey, they've been battling Ohio State, Clemson, those big front lines. They've and beat they've those teams. They're going to do it with quickness and keep the play up court. So you're picking UCLA in a no, game. Please, 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 please. I, I made my picks and I was wrong, which is very, very rare. Meanwhile, <laughs> back at the summit in Houston, we're 62 seconds away from the final buzzer. Louisville's Derek Smith at the line with a 15-point lead. We've got the big Irish special following hurling and boxing on Sports World here on NBC. Derek Smith now shooting for his 14th point. Surprisingly, they won with Derek Smith having a flat game. He sure. usually has an excellent. I watched him three times this year, and he was out of sight. This is Daryl Griffith oh, back in the game. Gee. Rebounds. Griffith trying to punctuate his yep. outstanding day. A pass to Wiley Brown and two more for Brown. Boy, Griffith is just outstanding. I thought he was going to try to create one there, though. Just take it inside and make up a shot. 84-66, Louisville in the final minute. 45 seconds left. Knocked away by Wiley Brown. So this team from Louisville, the Metro champions, with Daryl Griffith, an outstanding, a superstar, but a freshman at center, one of their top players, Sophomore Scooter McRae out for the year with knee injury. Two sophomore forwards and another sophomore guard, and they're going to the final four. You see the hands shaking above the head. You know what the guys call that? A high five. A high five. <laughs> and there's another freshman going there is high five. five. There's high, they're high fiving out there right now. Louisville with some high fives. <laughs> Benny Crum really is pleased with his team. You know, every once in a while, the coach has a team that just goes beyond what he ever could have expected. There's Rodney M uh, McCray in back of me. Scooter McCray. Scooter, Scooter and Rodney. Yeah. Look, Look at how big Rodney, uh, Scooter. I mean, Scooter has become so much stronger physically, his and upper he'll, body. He'll just be a sophomore next year, so they'll have two McCrays. That'll be the best brother act since the Van Arsdales were at Indiana. They automatically become twins. 85-66, Louisville. Denny Crum emptying his bench. Berkman's going to come out. He played his usual fine defensive game as he stirred things up when LSU had the ball. And Dick, here's a young freshman going to be in the final four. And talking about those outstanding freshmen, uh, Pannon from Villanova and Antoine Carr. Two more guys on our honorable mention team. Yeah, yeah, Rodney McRae comes good. out, the freshman for Louisville. There he is, Rodney McRae. Daryl Griffith. Daryl Griffith. Is he a player? Yep. I don't think he's 6'4". He's more 6'3". Uh, he's almost 6'2 and a half. I'm real pleased that he's got to the final four. I like everyone to be there, especially the coaches, but I'm I'm happy for Griffin. And meanwhile, it's an LSU team that did not play a good game today. They're much better than they've shown. They're down by 20 at the point. Duran, Macklin, and Dwayne Scales just didn't get a chance to play much today. The ball just didn't find their hands. Well, they've got everybody back on this club to speak of, and you can expect LSU to be in the thick of things next year in the national playoffs. Both teams have emptied their benches. Number 44 in white now for LSU is Andy Campbell. He's 7'2 and a member of the Australian Olympic team. He is so tall and has such long arms, he can, there he goes, he can stand on the floor and touch the rim without leaving his feet. Being from Australia, I nicknamed him the platypus. <laughs> Unable to connect from outside was number 22, Jay Bryant. Don't you know Bajaran. what that is, Billy? 
What is dick a platypus? You know what it is, Dick. It's an animal over in Australia. No, it's, it's a all... mammal. It's not an animal. I know. It has warm um, <laughs> temperature or something. <laughs> Denny Crumbs Cardinals could care less. Dale Brown will think about another year. He had a great season and winning this year ever for LSU. But it ends on a sour note for the Tigers. You know, the three games that Kentucky and LSU played this year, I was at all three of them, and they may have been three of the best college basketball games I saw all year. When do you get home, Billy? Poncha Wright has it taken away. And we'll have a jump ball. There's 22. Bajaran, a 6'3 sophomore from Port Allen, Louisiana. Dale Brown still in it. Look at him. He's still in it. Great competitor. Yeah, he sees. Greg Deucer will jump for Louisville. He's from New Albany, Indiana. He's a gladiator. The problem with tournaments is only one team wins. It's the toughest tournament to win because you've got five or six sudden death games against only the best teams. You don't have three out of five or two out of three or four out of seven. You just